You had the basis of, of DRAM and microprocessors. So how, how did the microprocessor side of that evolve? The microprocessor side evolved by, by Intel uh, having a custom deal. Uh, and uh, this custom deal was a, a Japanese customer that wanted to make a, a, a family of calculators, desktop calculators mm. and calculating machines. They had developed their own architecture. They had a three chip CPU. Uh, they were still using uh, uh, serial memories, you know, shift registers, because in those days there was no dynamic RAM yet. Right. So the only low cost memory, read write memory was the shift register. Mm. And uh, uh, but shift register is difficult to, you know, to to handle because, uh, you know, it's great for data. If, if you like a terminal or a calculator right. where you can, and, you, can yeah. you can have circulating data. But but when you have uh, you know when you have data your programs uh, you know what do you do right so so it's it's kind of a complicated to handle and, uh, uh, and to uh, and to load programs and so and so on is is a co complex thing so that's why they had three chips but basically those three chips were were due to two things one is that the level of integration that was possible in those days was not was not Minimum, sufficient yeah, exactly. yeah and the extra complexity so uh so the those three chips were reduced to one chip by changing the architecture so that the architecture could uh could handle Integrate, ram yeah. instead of shift registers yeah. as, as read write memory right. uh, which which sa save a lot but still, you know, it couldn't be done in a single chip. It, you know, the silicon gate was necessary. That change was not done by me. It was done by one of the application people at, at uh, you know, at, at Intel. Though, it, it, you know, the architecture of that computer is kind of, you know, is standard in those days. You know, you, you, many people knew how to do it. The question was, how do you do it? How can you put 23, 2500 transistors? We didn't know yet. It was between 22, 2500, the estimate. Uh, in a single chip, right. they had to be small enough to be, you know, to make money and so on. And so, so that was my task. I handled all of that. It was, you know, so I was creating the process, in. creating the tools, all the things around. All to, the things around. Uh, yeah, uh, Intel in those days were making memories. Uh, they were just beginning. They were, when I joined, they were just in the middle of uh, making the 1103 was the first 1000 bit dynamic RAM. And what year was this then? When did you This was, was 60, uh, uh, 1970. 1970, uh, you know, okay. April, April. So you moved to Intel then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that, that was a, you know, Intel was a small company. They had probably 120 people of which, uh, you know, most of them were workers, you know, because they, had, they were already in production. They were producing shift registers in those yeah. days and uh, a few memories, but memories were still s slow to be picked up also because they were slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Access time 1.5 microsecond. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in the in the book, you were talking about some of the characters you you dealt with in launching the microprocessors. Any interesting stories or people, personalities, obviously that you well, had to deal yeah, with here. Yeah, but you know, I, I I could go on for for hours, <laughs> right? So so I I think that we have so much to talk about. Okay, all we right. We better move on. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> So, but this time we're we're around the 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 processor four four zero zero four four zero four, and then of course uh, four thousand zero four was for, for a, it was a exclusive for the customer, but uh, you know and and nobody at Intel thought that it, it it could be useful other than making calculators, and I say no 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 this is excellent to make uh, controllers you know like microcontrollers, right. uh, what now you would do with a microcontroller so uh, so and but it, they won't listen. So, so I actually develop a tester of the 4004 using the 4004 as the controller of the tester, and also the generator of the test pattern of the tester. Interesting. Mm. So mm. that, you know, uh, you know, and so I wanted to figure out how a customer would would have to use these parts because you know, a microprocessor, you 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 know. A data, data sheet is not enough. You need to have some tools, you know, give some help to the customer. And so, so I learn, I figure out, you know, what needs to be done as an engineer using these parts, uh, other than, you know, the customer that already knew it was tooled up to do that. It was right, right, Visicom, right. a Japanese customer. So, um, 
so with that, I was able to convince my, my bosses to get back, to buy back the exclusivity uh, uh, so that they could sell the, uh, you know, those four chipset, CPU, RAM, ROM, and I.O. So there, was, there were four chips that would work seamlessly together. And, uh, and, and, and at that time, Bob Noyce was the CEO. And, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I even knew that, that uh, Busycom was in trouble because Shima, the engineer that was, you know, came over here to, you know, to, uh, to help out with the, with the, uh, um, with the design of the, of the, uh, of the chipset, um, uh, essentially to, you know, to represent the customer because it was an exclusive uh, uh, deal for them, um, uh, told me that, uh, that uh, uh, the company was not doing very well. They were paying too much for the, <laughs> for the chipset. <laughs> And so I so I, I told Bob Noyce that if he would lower the price, he probably would, would get yeah, the exclusivity exactly, back. So, exactly. Which is exactly what he did. And uh, and so so in November of, of uh, 71, 50 years ago, um, uh, the 4004 was announced. Yeah. And uh, I must say, except for the people that knew what computers do, it did very well yeah. for the people that have had a need that has something they wanted to solve the problem, right? And uh, and so it was it was very successful, not a, not highly successful, but very successful. Paid the bills for uh, the eight thousand eight, which was the next. Also, that one started as a custom product. It was the first eight bit microprocessor in the world, which I also directed. Right. Uh, was I, still uh, what, what was the customer base for this? It was data point. Data point. Data point. Okay. Data point, which never used it, and so uh, Intel bought back the rights for the architecture. And uh, uh, and then out of that, I I changed the architecture, improved it, and uh, developed the 8080. And it took me nine months to get my managers to let me do it. I figured <laughs> out what the, the you know what was needed. So the I, challenges I, of today were the still challenges <laughs> was to get to get yeah are so still present. We're all present all back this, then. The management is always in the way. You know, sorry about obstacles. It. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 